Uh, let's get to one of those headlines that really has been moving the markets over the last, uh, really, I guess, since the start of the year, so the last six months so far. And that, of course, is the latest when it comes to coronavirus. We had another grim milestone over the weekend, the total number of deaths worldwide now topping 500,000 with more than 10 million confirmed cases. And for more on that, I want to bring in Dr. Angela Rasmussen. She's a vi virologist at Columbia. And we also have Yahoo Finance's Anjali Kemlani joining the conversation. And Dr. Rasmussen, let me just get your take just in terms of the surge in the number of cases that we're seeing in many states, including in Florida and in Texas specifically. When you look at those, the number of surges, uh, the cases uh, surging so quickly, what is the best way you think to address this issue at this point? So this is a really tricky question because I don't think we are where we were in March in terms of our willingness and appetite for imposing these lockdown orders or stay home orders um, or really dialing back some of the reopenings that have occurred. Of course, it is those unfettered reopenings that have driven this surge in new cases. And really the time that we should have intervened in this would have been when we, start, we started to see those case numbers increase. Right now, we are looking at a very difficult, dangerous situation in which hospitals in many of these affected major cities, such as Houston, are at capacity. Um, and we are going to start seeing uh, increased deaths from coronavirus. So what we really need to do um, to make sure that everybody is safe is we need to implement as many uh, sort of dialing back measures and the reopening as possible so that we can get community transmission under control in the affected states. Doctor, it's Anjali here. One of the things that I think we've seen is the commentary about the politicizing of mask wearing. And we just saw Senator Mitch McConnell sort of pull that back um, and speak for the Republicans. And so I think that's one of the interesting developments today. Is that enough or are we past the point where that can help? I don't think we're past the point where it can help, but um, it certainly would have been more helpful if those uh, that mask guidance had been implemented weeks earlier. Um, so masks are just one component of multiple risk reduction measures that we can take to re reduce community transmission. So we can have universal mask wearing. We can also continue to drive home the message that physical distancing uh, and social distancing, uh, minimizing uh, trips to essential errands are all different measures that we can apply um, to, to really limit that community transmission and get it down to a level where we can actually start doing some epidemiology work um, testing, isolating cases, and uh, contact tracing. And those, those are really time-proven methods for breaking these chains of community transmission. But in order to be able to do that, we have to get community transmission down to a level um, by implementing all of those risk reduction measures. Dr. Rasmussen, I want to go back to something you said before, just in terms of dialing back some of those uh, measures of reopening efforts that we're seeing underway. Today, we heard New Jersey postponing its uh, indoor dining indefinitely at this point. We have New York City, though, at this point on track for its phase three next week. Do you think New York City should reexamine or delay then its phase three because of what we're seeing play out in other parts of the country? Absolutely. And particularly when it it comes to indoor activities. So one thing that has become apparent over the last few months of the pandemic is that indoor or enclosed spaces are a greater risk for transmission. Um, we know that transmission is largely driven by uh, pre-symptomatic people, people who don't know that they're infected. So um, New York City should really reconsider uh, opening up indoor office spaces, um, indoor restaurants and bars and things like that because those really are environments that we know there is a much higher risk of transmission, uh, especially when individuals are spending a lot of time in those environments. Doctor, you mentioned contact tracing as one of those things. I know that we, there's so much that's been talked about how and when it can develop. And there are some areas that have already worked on hiring and training, uh, but it seems like we haven't really seen much of an impact just yet from that. And that goes back to your point that there, the, the spread is still so large and no one can feasibly, no you know, army of contact tracers can feasibly get to that. So how do we go about getting to that point? And when do we start seeing those tracers out there? So that's an excellent question, one that I'm not sure that I have the answer to. What we've, what we've seen now is that we effectively have 50 different leaders um, implementing these measures in different states in different ways. And so really that's going to depend on the state uh, that it's in. It's also going to depend a lot on testing capacity because tracing is just one component of that. So you need to be able to test a lot of people. Um, and in some communities where there's low transmission, 
perhaps that's feasible. In places like Texas, where we're starting to see a higher, much higher positivity rates, meaning that they only have enough tests to test people who are likely to be infected, um, that is far gone from where we will be able to successfully implement contact tracing. So it really depends a lot on both testing capacity, um, the situation in each of those specific uh, communities and states, um, as well as the leadership of those states and the contact tracing plans that they've implemented. I think our biggest problem was that we reopened before we had that capacity really anywhere. And now we are seeing the results of that happen, of that reopening. Dr. Angela Rasmussen, a virologist at Columbia. Uh, great to get your perspective on the show. Thanks so much for taking the time this afternoon. Thanks for having me. Hey, investors, Zach Guzman here. Are you interested in learning more about the markets and getting the latest financial news? Well, then click right here to subscribe to our Yahoo Finance YouTube channel. Get the latest up-to-the-minute market analysis, big interviews in the world of finance, and information on how to manage your money every day, wherever you are.